Hello students. In today's video, we are going to study classification of receptors. This video is seventh in the series of videos on pharmacodynamics. Now, as we all know, receptors are macromolecules located on the surface or inside the cell. Now, endogenous substances like, for example, acetylcholine, adrenaline, insulin or drugs bind to these receptors, activate them and produce pharmacological response. Now, receptors are mostly proteins. There are four major families of receptors. First are the physiological receptors. Now, these receptors produce response to endogenous substances or ligands. Here, ligands are the substances that bind to receptors. Now, endogenous substances include neurotransmitters like acetylcholine and adrenaline, then hormone, uh, for example, insulin, then uh, uh, autocoids like uh, uh, histamine and some very common uh, examples of physiological receptors are cholinergic receptors which bind to acetylcholine, then adrenergic receptors which bind to adrenaline, histaminergic receptors that bind to histamine, then steroidal receptors, leukotriene receptors, insulin receptors etc. Now, endogenous substances as well as drugs bind to these receptors and very important to remember that majority of receptors are the physiological receptors. Now, second family of uh, receptors are the drug receptors. Now, there is no physiological ligand for these receptors. That means no endogenous substance uh, can bind to these receptors to produce the pharmacological response. And therefore, response is produced only by the drugs. And therefore, these receptors are called as drug receptors. For example, benzodiazepine receptors, then sulfonyl receptors. Another type of receptors are the orphan receptors. Now, no ligand is known for these receptors, neither the endogenous substances nor the drugs. And therefore, these receptors are termed as orphan receptors. Then silent receptors. Now silent receptors bind to specific drugs but produce no pharmacological response. Therefore termed as silent, silent receptors. For example, plasma proteins. These plasma proteins they are found uh, present in the plasma and these plasma proteins they bind to certain substances but produce no pharmacological response. Now Receptors are of multiple types and subtypes. So let's study the criteria for the classification of receptors in multiple types and subtypes. Now first is the pharmacological criteria. Now each uh, class of receptors uh, exhibit distinct or very specific pharmacological actions and thus relative potencies are shown by selective agonist and antagonist for each class of receptors. Now let's understand pharmacological criteria for classification of receptors with the help of these examples. Now cholinergic receptors are classified as muscarinic receptors and nicotinic receptors. That means cholinergic receptors are of two types, muscarinic receptors and nicotinic receptors. Now, endogenous ligand that binds to muscarinic receptors as well as the nicotinic receptors is the acetylcholine. So, acetylcholine is an agonist or acetylcholine is an agonist for muscarinic receptors as well as nicotinic receptors. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. Now, when acetylcholine binds to muscarinic cholinergic receptors, it produces pharmacological actions that are mimicked or that are produced by the alkaloid muscarine. While when acetylcholine binds to nicotinic cholinergic receptors, it produces pharmacological actions that are produced by the alkaloid nicotine. Now, muscarinic receptors are blocked by atropin. So, atropin is a specific antagonist for muscarinic receptors. Whereas nicotinic receptors are blocked by the curare. So curare is the specific antagonist for nicotinic receptors. Now similarly adrenergic receptors are classified as alpha receptors and beta receptors. So adrenergic receptors are of two types alpha receptors and beta receptors. Now 
these alpha receptors are further subdivided as alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors and beta receptors are further classified as beta 1, beta 2 and uh, beta 3 receptors. Now endogenous ligands for alpha and beta receptors are adrenaline and noradrenaline. Now here also adrenergic agonists show distinct or different potencies towards alpha and beta receptors. For example, isoprenaline. Isoprenaline is a beta agonist and it shows actions only on beta receptors. That means it produces actions by binding to beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 receptors. Another example is of phenylephrine. Now, as already uh, I have told you that alpha receptors are of two types, alpha 1 and alpha 2. Now, phenylephrine is a selective alpha 1 agonist. It shows negligible beta actions. And another example uh, is of histaminergic H1 and H2 receptors. Now, histaminergic H1 receptors are blocked by chlorpheniramine, while H2 receptors are blocked by antagonists like uh, cimetidine and renitidine. So, this is the pharmacological criteria for the classification of receptors. Now, pharmacological criteria for the classification of receptors is the oldest and the classical criteria. Second criteria for the classification of receptors is based on the distribution or location of receptors in different tissues or organs. Different classes of receptors are located in different regions. For example, adrenergic beta receptors. These are subclassified as beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 based on differences in the distribution of these receptors. Now, beta 1 receptors are distributed in the cardiac tissue. Beta 2 receptors are located in the bronchial smooth muscles while beta 3 receptors are located in the adipose tissue. Now, the third criteria is the ligand binding. Now, as per this third criteria, receptors are uh, classified on the basis of the ability of receptor to bind to specific ligand with high affinity. Now, here ligand is a substance that binds to the receptor. Now, multiple 5-hydroxytryptamine or serotonin receptors have been classified on this basis. For example, 5-hydroxytryptamine 1, 2, 3, then 5-hydroxytryptamine uh, 5, 6 and 7 receptors and further 5-hydroxytryptamine receptors are classified as 5-hydroxytryptamine 1A receptors, 5-hydroxytryptamine 1B receptors, 5-hydroxytryptamine uh, 1D receptors etc. Another very important criteria for the classification of receptors is based upon the transducer pathway. Now, when a ligand binds to the receptor, it induces a number of biochemical reactions inside the cell that finally leads to the generation of pharma uh, physiological response. So, transducer pathway is the mechanism by which receptor is activated and it produces the response. So, receptor subtypes are classified on the basis of transducer pathways or on the basis of mechanism by which receptors are activated and produce the physiological or pharmacological response. Uh, for example, muscarinic uh, that is M-cholinergic receptors, uh, they act through the G proteins. Then N-cholinergic receptors, that is nicotinic cholinergic receptors of acetylcholine, they gate or they increase the influx of sodium ions. That is when the acetylcholine binds to uh, nicotinic cholinergic receptors, there is, a, there is increase in the influx of sodium ions inside the cells and that is responsible for the physiological response that is contraction of the skeletal muscles. Another uh, transducer pathway by which uh, receptors are classified are the alpha adrenergic receptors. They produce their action via inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol pathway and also by decreasing uh, cyclic adenosine monophosphate uh, that is cyclic AMP in the cytoplasm. Then beta adrenergic receptors, they produce their response by increasing cyclic AMP in the cells. 
Another very important criteria for the classification of receptors is the molecular cloning. Now, as we all know that uh, receptors are proteins. Receptor protein is cloned and its amino acid sequence and three-dimensional structure is studied. Now, receptor subtypes are classified based on similarity in the amino acid sequence that is based upon the sequence homology. Now, uh, because of the emergence of so many different criteria for the classification of receptors has resulted in a lot of confusion and hence International Union of Pharmacological Sciences has decided on continual basis and gives a consensus receptor classification which is finally accepted. So this is in brief on classification of receptors. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.